Okay, we're talking Arrow, season seven, episode eight. Arch, uh, Archer, Oliver is back. I'm just, this episode was too exciting. You guys, we know who the new Arrow is and she's a lady. She's a lady. All right, everybody, let's go. This is Arrow. You're tuned in to After Buzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. What's up? You guys, it's like we were just here. It's like we were just here. And my head, I'm having deja vu. I'm having deja vu. This song while she was working out on those rings, I was like, girl. It was sensuous. Yes. It was sensuous. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the After Buzz TV Air, Arrow After Show. We are talking season seven, episode eight, Unmasked. I'm Matt Marr. Welcome to the show. We're so happy to be here. I have my lovely co-host, Carolina Bonetti. Y'all know me. Y'all know us. Um, y'all, uh, Olivia, you saw in the video. If you don't want to know where Olivia is, you can just talk to her in the chat. She's there. Or you can also watch a video from last episode uh, that we posted. And uh, Ali Kona, we love you. She's in London working. All right, everybody. And last but not least, we have our lovely third co-host today you guys you guys so jump in that chat let us know um i already got a little bit of tidbit of really goodness i have to say from my after Buzz husband as i call him ivan soto i hope he doesn't mind that i say that if that offends you ivan he then keeps tell showing me up. i don't think i think he loves him. me too i think we love each other back it, it's a bro love it's your fake it's marriage bro love. it is um but ivan said that james bamford the stunt coordinator of arrow directed this episode yes he did and that makes sense because it was of, pretty of awesome episode seven Oh no, he said eight too. Or oh, maybe was it eight? Ivan was it seven or eight? I was confused. Either one was really good. I thought it was seven because of all the, it was literally like welcome to Fight Club. Um and again, happy birthday to Steven Starr. We love you, Steven. We love all your support. You're wonderful. Yes. Thank okay. You. Let's talk about real quick while Ivan lets us know. Um who do we who who do what do we love to hate this episode? I wrote it down. I had a lot of feelings. <laughs> I have a few. <laughs> She's got a long list if you're listening to the podcast. <clears throat> All right, go in. Love to hate number one, <laughs> the mayor. Love to hate number two, Lila. Love to hate number three, Diggle. And I'll get into it as we get into the episode. As we get into the episode. But they did some shady, shady things. Shady. Lila and Diggle. Y'all shady, I'm so mad at you. Like, I don't even know. You're not friends with people anymore. Like, I'm not no. friends with you anymore. Okay? Yeah. Lila and Diggle, we're not friends. We're, we're not, I broke up hey, our hey, relationship. Hey, don't. Hey, I love Diggle's arm. Don't don't go after him yet. He's but, got... It, ooh, we'll get we're to We're going to talk to it. By the way, but I even said it was episode seven. He directed, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I figured. Um, Fight Club. Bamford. My love to hate was... It, to me, my love to hate this episode was Lila. It's Lila mm. because she's bringing her trustworthy man down the wrong road. And it ain't right. And you know what? I, I'm not going to blame Diggle because he is torn between the love of Oliver and the love of his wife, who's the father of his son. So I'm blaming Lila. This is nothing about love. This is about what is morally correct. And he is shady. It's shady. And he shady. should be talking to his wife like, babe, like, you're shady. We should No, this is not happening. It's shady. Well... I'm very disappointed in Diggle. We broke up tonight. We... I can't ever break I do, up with I those don't arms. know if we'll ever get back together. The verdict is still out. Unless we break up and then we get back together and I cry and then he just holds me in like you a You can also hug. just work out Wait, and where, have those arms. Where am I? Where am I? Sorry, I went somewhere. It's not the same if I don't hold them. Do you want me to hold you yeah. in my arms? Oh, that would be great, Diggle. All right. No, I mean me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to call you Diggle Baby? Let's call you Diggle Baby. Yes. Okay, let's talk about. So let's talk about first. I mean, uh, which this is a big. We got like a tease, a very tease. We know who the new Arrow is, y'all. I love that they opened the episode with what's been their anticipation all season. That was a pretty cool thing to see, and I'm still not over that workout. I was like, I would break my head. Uh, yeah. Is that really the actress? But doing you know it? what? Does it look like her? They had they they had shots of her face while she was doing crazy. It looked like she was doing. What I thought was cool is, think about when we first were introduced to Oliver as the Arrow. Yeah. He was doing these workout things. Yeah. So I thought that was a cool callback mm -hmm. of like what Arrow does. And um, which, I love that. Which to me is also kind of a callback. I feel like 
Beth has taken, Beth is the showrunner, if you're not aware, she's also the executive producer. Um, but she's kind of taken Arrow, and she's bringing us back to its roots. I think so, too. You know, in the in the beginning of Arrow, we saw a lot of prison-like sequences mm-hmm. from the island. We really did. Oh, yeah, that's true. And we just spent half a season in prison, and now we're seeing these throwback workouts with Lila, and I feel like it it's a callback to what things were. Mm-hmm. And nothing made my heart pitter-patter, like seeing the entire Arrow team together and playing nice. This is what I want want more of okay yeah it was nice okay it was wonderful so i i want to see more of that and i feel like beth is taking us in that direction and i'm thrilled but i'm mad at diggle we still broken up so new arrow it's oliver's daughter or no no it's oliver's sister oliver's sister sister. it's half sister half sister because robert queen is accountable for adultery in the comics it's, I was trying to do a, a look real quick, but I just didn't have time. Which, what's her, is this not, it's obviously there was Thea, and then this, is it, what's her name again in the comics? Lila. It, the, 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 his sister is called Lila? Isn't it? No, no. that's Diggle's wife. No, that's Diggle's wife. I thought wife. it was like Mia. I'm losing Ma- it. Hang I on. had it. I'll tell you right now. And I think I lost it. But I'm I'll tell you right now. My brain is like going brain. Someone's going to know in the chat Either because everybody pop up is. Either someone's going to tell me first, but I'm pretty sure. I love that Ivan said Robert Queen is a hound dog. He is. Well, you know, rich white guys just sleep with people. That's kind of what Emmy. they just do. Anybody. Emmy. Her e- name is Emmy. Emmy. Okay. Well, that'd be, that'd be interesting to see. So, like, because she's supposed to be. His sister's always been speedy. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. Here's the thing. Is in the... here. Oh, here's what it is. So in the comics, she has an alter ego. So Thea... A lot of people think it's... They're calling her Mia or Maya. Oh, it might be Maya. Oh, Olivia says Maya. It's M-I-A. I would think that's Mia. But maybe it's Maya. I don't Maybe. know. We'll have to wait until they pronounce and it. And I think in the, co- reading it in comics, the comics, Maya is the one who's like one of the first comic book characters who's, who's HIV positive, which would be a cool thing to see too. Mm. I just like that. We don't so, see that. Well, a lot. In, no, we don't. So in the in the comics, Thea is Mia. Or Maya. Yes. They're yes. the same person. They're the same person. But it's her alter ego. That's what it was. It's She goes by uh, Mia Dearden in the comics as an mm-hmm. alter ego, but she's actually Thea Queen. Um, Thea okay. Dearden Queen. But Thea yeah, Dearden yeah, Queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And her alter ego is Mia. So my question is, like, I feel like they've just brought in a new aspect. So now he's got two sisters. So, and Matt Shamlu, hi Matt, in the chat says, anybody think her mother is Isabella Rochef? Ooh. Or Isabel Rochef. That would be good. It would make sense. Yeah. That would make sense. It would make sense. I'm, that, I, I actually was, I was so in, on her, I went, oh, we didn't even think who the mama, who the mama baby, well, baby I, mama daddy. I, I was trying to think of it when I was watching it because I was like, who was it that she would look like that and be a sister? I was like trying yeah. to like yeah. narrow down the possibilities. But yeah, I think Also a little diversity good. on Arrow, a little more. I love it. I love it. I no, love it too. That's one thing to see, W. Huge props. They're really great yeah. at diversity across all people of color. They're really great at diversity across LGBT. Yeah, they're they great. They don't shy away. And you know what? I will say that before Beth took over as showrunner, I don't think that they were as inclusive about real world issues. But I love that in episode seven and now episode eight, they're really talking about prison reform. I hope they keep that up. Because that is something that is incredibly important. And if you're interested in knowing more about it, you should watch the 13th Amendment on Netflix. Oh, man, that's a good documentary. It is a mind-blowing documentary mind blowing like you will be yeah. boggled at how the prison system that's was a, created to like make money it's insane after I, yeah, it's I won't great. get into all of it but I just wanted to say if you're interested because they are tackling more real world topics it's that's really good that's the docu series really, for you yeah it's yeah. so good so good okay um all right so everybody's go everybody now is like oh who's the mama who's the mama but we're just gonna have to find out and but we really <laughs> just saw kind of the beginning and then mm-hmm. we saw and then she got away and then we see a little bit of her at the end and that was it i like the way they did that i like that it wasn't captured i like that i don't know i like we found out who they who she was on her time so I'm, yeah I'm good with it. Although I will say, I never understand why people who are innocent run away when people ask them questions. I get that she didn't want to meet her brother, I guess, but then I feel like she does want to meet him because she's there for her father's agenda. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I think obviously it's going to be, um, 
it's going to be something Oliver is going to have to. I don't. I wonder if they're going to even have her dealt with. Them. I don't know. There's so much. There's so many predictions. I, where I, I, it makes me, which well, I have to say, was it? I mean, I give props for props are due. Were you the one that called it? Was it you or Olivia who said it? They thought it was uh, Oliver's half sister. Uh, I think we both kind of said it. I, I think don't Olivia will yell at first. me and say it was me if it's in the chat. It was not me. I don't. I don't remember if I think. I think I thought that Kat McNamara was going to be the sister. Ah, uh, I think you did. Okay. Um, and I think that that's what it was because when I saw her casting announcement and somebody said they thought it was a girl and I was like, oh, it's Kat McNamara. Oh, and they're the same episode, which we're going to talk about. Kat, who was Black Star. Which I'm really excited about. Which was great in front um, of that character. So, okay. And I have a surprise for you guys on that too, but stay tuned. Stay tuned. Um, well, Olivia, you, I think you were right so then. I, I kind of oh, called it. Oh, Olivia said it was me. So, yeah. Olivia, it was props to Olivia. Yay. Okay, so New Era, it's happening. Let's talk into, okay, where do we want to go? I'm going to leave it up to you. We can talk about Oliver and Felicity. Can we talk about Elicity? We can talk about Renee and Dinah. Do you want to talk about Elicity? <sighs> yes. Okay. Oh, I was waiting for that kiss. He just took his shirt off, and I was like, yes. We saw I'm some shirtless this. Oliver. They were having arrow oh, sex, and I was delicious. here for it. I loved it. But you know what? I, I really liked it. Um, but I, I am kind of upset that Oliver judged her so harshly for who she had to become in order to stay alive while he was in jail. Mm -hmm. Because if she hadn't become that person, Diaz would have killed her. Diaz would have killed her when he had yeah. the chance if she hadn't become that person. Uh, Which the flash forwards over. are making sense now. I mean, not to go... There's really not much that happened. In the, I mean, yes, with the Black Star, we're going to talk... But as far as in Felicities, not much happened. But it does... These flash forwards, as we went off, like, two episodes ago, and people told us they hated us in the chat... <laughs> About it, I like which, the flash forwards. You're the one with the problem with the fast flash forwards. And if anything, at this point, I no, like them even more. Ali Kona hated like, them. I went back and forth. Now I'm, I'm back the on the band. I'm room. a fickle pickle. I admit it. I'm fickle. <laughs> I'm a fickle pickle. I'm a fickle pickle. But um, I like the flash forwards. But we, what we weren't happy with Felicity like la two episodes ago because we thought this doesn't seem like Felicity. No, but, I just wanted her to pull the trigger. But no, but I mean, we were like, this isn't the Felicity we know. I feel like they did a good job. For somebody who was like, no, I'm not getting... They made sense to me. Like, mm -hmm. okay, now... That was such a great scene when Felicity said to Oliver, you sacrificed everything and left William and I here to figure out and be sitting ducks for Diaz. And I I hadn't thought of it. She said it so bluntly to him. I went, oh, damn. Well, that's what I was thinking about the whole time is that what his decision was incredibly unfair and selfish because what did he think was going to happen when he was in jail? And I wrote down, I was like, I don't like this double standard as in him preaching to her about uh -huh. being violent. Mm -hmm. And good for you, Felicity, standing up for this BS role. And I love that she said, what am I supposed to do with an apology? How many times have women across the world wanted to say that to men and have said that to men? Mm -hmm. What are you supposed to do with an apology? I'm sorry I left you. Right, well, you were left alone, so you had to figure it out. You can't come back and be angry that things changed because you bounced and made a bad judgment call. Mm -hmm. You did. And it's okay to say I'm sorry, but you also have to live up to the fact that you made a bad judgment call, mm -hmm. and now you have to deal with the repercussions. And part of the repercussions is that Felicity is a different person. I will say that I'm heartbroken at where it ended. I don't like that it looks like they're breaking up again, but again, it brings us back to the beginning of Arrow, where they weren't together. But they're married, so I hope they don't get divorced. I don't know. I hope they don't get divorced. I don't want to see that. I really don't want to see that. Because mm -hmm. uh, it took so much for them to get married. I'd rather have a separation if they are going to separate. Mm -hmm. And then let them work out their problems naturally throughout the progression of the series. But no divorce, please. I'm really heavily against that. I hope so, too. Only because whenever they... She was like, I don't know if I'm ready for this now. Y'all, Carolina literally went, oh. Olivia just texted me, yes, girl, preach. Yes, it's true. <laughs> um, Olivia also was like, they went in on us last week when we hated Felicity. Well, they did. But you well, know I never hate Felicity. I was just disappointed in the writing that they didn't make her pull the trigger for some type of action. Not to kill Diaz, but to maim him in some way. That was disappointing to me. Yeah. Because she had already become this character she'd already gone there so i just wanted to see a decision so i'm glad that she made the decision and good for her for telling oliver where he could go shove it with his double standard i i, I like that as well i think i hope that they don't do the whole 
I, I, this, to me, Arrow is not, a, it's not like Friends where it's about Ross and Rachel, and I'm dating myself because I don't probably half a year or too young and don't remember Friends. But it, to me, it's not, to me, the heart of Arrow, yes, it's its family, but it's not actually, it's not even Elicity. To me, the heart of Arrow has always been like Oliver trying to do, trying to do the right thing for not only Felicity, but his family in general, like legacy of family, and mm -hmm. like, and trying to that find, to balance who he really is versus who he wants to be, and then who he feels it compelled he has to be. Well, speaking And that's what I think the show's about. So I don't want it to become like three seasons of are they or aren't they. Yeah, Bleh. because also, you know, they mention William in this episode, and you've already put this boy through so much, you cannot let him come home to a broken home where, uh, Felicity and Oliver are not together. That's unfair yeah. to William, and that would also be really disappointing yeah. to see. They need yeah. to figure it out. Like, just figure your crap out, guys. Figure it out. Go hump in the bathroom, come out, talk about it, hump a little more, and you'll be fine. I mean, he's already got to figure out how to... I mean, can you imagine being gay and telling all the Green Arrow that you're gay? He's got to go through that. He's got enough. I don't, William has enough. This I isn't don't, about me at all. First of all, I don't think... Oliver would care that his son he was won't, gay. He won't, but you know, but I don't care. You don't care. You don't know. You're always with your dad. You're always like, oh God, I'm so nervous. He'd probably oh tell Felicity it's not about first. Me. I feel like he'd tell <laughs> Felicity first. Oh, for And Felicity oh. would be like, yay, let's throw a pinata party. Let's Felicity's do it. Felicity's already going to know. So, she's so She's already going to know. So, okay. So, obviously, we don't want them to break up. Um, uh, I did think that I was, again, I was kind of like when she shot him. And Oliver's like, what did you just do? You, you know, fell the city. And I was like, <laughs> dude, she didn't kill the guy. There was someone just shooting arrows in you, trying to kill you. And she just, like, I am, I am liberal AF. I'm like all about gun policy. I'm like, let's take crazy people's guns. Sure, do it. Absolutely. Take I'm all so the crazy that way. Guns. That yeah. said, I'm like, if somebody breaks into your house, mm -hmm. it's okay to shoot them. Yeah, it's okay to yeah, shoot them. They're so, trying to hurt you, absolutely. Yeah, and wow. when they're trying to kill you, and Oliver's the, like, "No," and I was like, "The Chill. metal mesh on the curtains. How impressive is that? Like low key security measure. When she stood behind it, that's why it couldn't go through. Yeah. she had like chain mail yeah. on the other side of the curtains. That's a serious yeah. security protocol, right yeah. there. Yeah, and like Drew Leonard says in the chat, Oliver he doesn't anymore, but he, but he still no, he has. Oliver shot people in this season. Yeah. So he shanked people. He shanked himself. Um. That anyway. Oh, Matt Shamlu says, Carolina, you sparked. This is a prediction for later, but says that sex scene in the beginning. What if that's a new Elicity baby? Yes. Oh, maybe that's what. See, I'm... Papi, that's what I've been waiting for. Oh, Give me maybe. an Elicity baby. I'd have Oliver's baby. All right. <laughs> Call him up. Let him Call know. him up. Hey. Okay. So let's talk about Renee and Dinah and kind of just their Speaking whole, of sex scenes, you got to <laughs> You guys, they, I'm market 1106, December 3rd, Tuesday. <laughs> They're going to knock some boots. Okay. They're going to get together. I'm calling it. And they're going to be a, a lovely couple. I kind of think they're two people that they're kind of boring individually, but together I like it. She's so pretty. She is very pretty. But yeah, the whole time they had their scenes together, you guys missed it. Like Matt was like frothing his mouth. He's like, they're going to do it. They're going to do it. <laughs> I said the F word. I was adamant about well, it. Yes, but we can't say we bad can't words say that on, on this After Buzz because we'll get podcast. the explicit. Yeah. And we'll get kicked out explicit here. Explicit content. So, okay, so I want to talk yeah. a little bit about, I mean, kind of segueing a little bit of, this mm -hmm. is a little bit of Dinah and Oliver, but why have we never thought to put Oliver on the police department before? I went, she did that, and I went, Oh. Well, because they could they could Well, I mean, he was in prison. Well, but, but before but, that. Before that, they couldn't because he wasn't open about who he was, and he was mayor. So the mm -hmm. mayor can't be part of the police force and oh, also the Green that's Arrow. True. Okay. And before that, he All wasn't right. that great of a, of a vigilante. He was pretty rough. So okay, when, well. in the seasons where he became usable as a police asset, mm -hmm. he was mayor. And then after, he was in jail. So this is the okay. first time where they've had the open opportunity to do it because he's out in the open about who he is. Okay, yeah. Okay, you make good sense. Okay, you make good sense. Fight me if you think I'm No, wrong. it's no, true. I'm joking. <laughs> um, but I love, I love this idea. Mm -hmm. I, like, I like that. Um, I, I, again, like you said, it's just nice to see them kind of 
still be themselves and argue, but all kind of be on the same team. We're getting out of this two teams. The newbie team is gone. It's just, I'm really happy to see that. Um, so speaking about the, the team coming yeah. together and Oliver being on the police force, my favorite moment of tonight's show, mm-hmm. my favorite moment was when Dinah came back at the mayor with the snap heard around the world where she was like with that district attorney flex. I was oh, like, oh, I know. that's right. That's right. She's like, Laurel is not going to say yes to him being in jail. She just got him out. Of course she's going to keep him on the police force. Yeah. I'm so thrilled. That was like the Thanos snap, except it was like a power snap instead and of DC, making people disappear. And in a police station, not like in a forest. Okay, it is and Captain America theoretical. Like it's the idea but that just like, like it. she brought everyone back <laughs> together instead of disappearing. She them. did bring back the everybody. To, so, and I, I liked it. I liked it. Was it was a good flex. <clears throat> it was. Oh, sorry, I look off. It was a good flex. Um, yeah, everybody's hoping that. It seems like we, that people are excited about that as well. So now talking a little bit about... Um, but it also, wait, I sorry, before no, we move ahead. on. Um, it also brought up what I've been saying all season is that they've been setting up the return of the vigilantes. But vigilantes seen in a positive light because they've been building it in the news reports. They've been building it with the good deeds that this new Green Arrow has done. And people saw that the new Green Arrow, the who we realized tonight was his other half sister, uh, which some of us knew. But mm-hmm. welcome to the conversation if you learned tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they've been building up this excitement of like, no, we need them. They are actually an asset to our city. Mm-hmm. They are an additional way to keep our city safe because all the crazy people like to visit this city. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, we we saw that tonight with the Green Arrow officially becoming a part of the justice system. I thought it was cool. Which is what happens a lot, actually, which is kind of something that's happened in the comics. So mm-hmm. um, I thought it was a cool, again, it goes to, you know, a scene that I thought, I mean, this is kind of Renee and Dinah, but also Oliver. The most powerful scene for me actually was, and again, it goes back to not elicity, like what Arrow is really about, is the scene where Oliver stops um, his, whatever, his Yale, whatever, preppy friend. Um, and he stops oh, him in Max the, Fuller. Max Fuller there and you go. stops him in the middle of the bar, mm-hmm. but without a mask, without a hood, and everybody is watching him. And if you notice, they even have it. They even had it lit like very brightly lit. Mm-hmm. Whereas the show usually is always so dark, especially when it's Arrow. It's like broad like that actually made me. I'm not gonna lie, y'all. It made me tear up a little bit because it's like at the genesis of this character it's honestly it felt like i always say like as a gay man and like as a therapist and a podcaster i love to talk to people about what was your coming out moment because everybody has a coming out moment not not be about their sexuality but about whatever that is in life and so i felt like that was like a coming out moment for oliver this is who i really am and i loved it it was my one of my favorite arrow moments ever i got emotional I went deep. Okay. I love that. Okay. Oh, Colin Prime says, I like that scene too. Thank you, sugar. Um, All right, everybody. So let's talk a little bit. I think we covered Renee and Dinah. They're going to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, We also find that we got a little bit in the flash forwards. I'm just kind of touching on the flash forwards because it was, we'll get to it. I do want to talk about them because I feel like they're finally coming full circle. They're starting to make more sense because we see Renee is now going to be in the glade, so we're going to mm-hmm. get to see probably next episode what happened to Renee. Mm-hmm. Um, which th- they better say something about or hint at he and Dinah had a history, or I'm leaving this show. I'm oh, I leaving, think they but did. I think because they will. She seemed a little like mm, yeah. about going to go yeah. see him, and the daughter seemed a bit hesitant. Yeah. Uh, so I'm excited to see what that tension's going to pan out to be. But I think the flash forwards are developing very nicely. Mm-hmm. We're learning a lot of information. Um, and we're also seeing more of this world. And I love that we learned what the tattoo finally was. Oh, that yeah, was yeah, yeah. That was cool. Deal. That was really cool. And I love that, you know, she was like, I didn't know about you, to, to William. I didn't know about you when you first got here. But your father saw things differently. And mm-hmm. you do, too. And I like that. I feel like it's setting us up for a true story. And like I said, Felicity is not evil. 
And well, and everybody's why... saying in the chat that Felicity is not dead. They still think she's no, alive. No, she's not dead and she's not evil. And I think that that was foreshadowed in um, Dinah having that moment with William saying, you see through things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, and it goes Dinah's back to Dinah's usually like... wrong. She's been more right lately. Dinah's usually wrong. <laughs> She was pretty much wrong all of last season, so I think she's all pretty wrong in like the flash forwards. Too. It's true. Bye. It's true. Yes. Um, yeah. We'll see. Yeah, Renee in the episode after the crossover. Thank you for that, Zias. Um, because next week we won't. Okay. So let's talk about real quickly because we still need to talk about Archer's Alley and some news and stuff. But I want to just hint on. I just want to say that we both audibly groaned like some MFers whenever we saw Diggle and Lila talking to Diaz. We were like, no! That's why I broke up with him. I thought That's we were just I done with, with you, Diaz. No! But I did call it at the end of episode seven. I was like, he ain't dead. And I said it on Twitter. A couple of you guys t hit me up on Twitter and were like, do you think he's really dead? And I was like, no. I know. I knew he wasn't dead. But I was I just needed the storyline would be done. I just needed time. You know how like when you like you had that bad breakup with someone and they just treated you wrong and like you just they don't stop texting yes and you're just like leave me alone but, give me a break but the one thought i did have when i saw that is like oh i think stanley is part of a bigger syndicate than we are aware of and i think that uh that's going to come into play as to why they're asking diaz for help okay because he's so deranged, you know, like in Supergirl, there was like that cult that happened and it was part mm -hmm. of like the big finale for it them. Was. I feel like he's part of some crazy cult and we're about to find out or who knows, he might knows? be part of the Longbow Hunters because they brought them back full circle this episode as well, chatting about it. It's true. As, Which I didn't understand yeah. how that Latin saying uh, tied them in with the Longbow Hunters. So if you guys know in the chat what that Latin saying meant and why it's relevant to the Longbow Hunters, I would love to know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm going to have to research it. Uh, but yeah, did you know? No. Uh, the Long... We... I yes. know who the Longbow Hunters are. We've seen them, but... Uh, we the, talked about it in like episode two. They haven't brought it up in a long time. So it's been a, it's been a hot Latin, minute. The Latin something about a red something. The, the red phrase. bear. Yeah, I was like... I thought they were talking about me. <laughs> you know, because I'm a gay, I'm a bear. You, you know, I'm, far, a, I'm a little chubby. Yeah, yeah, okay, it. so I love you. if you don't know what a gay bear is, Google it, but probably not at work. You might lose your job. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say that. Oh, you know, goodness. a lot of people are saying that, uh, and I agree, I just want to say this and I want to move on, but this kind of, uh, they think Felicity is going to be the one that kills Diaz. I'm Good here for, for it. Her. I'm here for it. I'm here for and that. And if all are bitches about it, I'm going to slap him. Snaps. And then I'm going to have Diggle Alicia hold me. Day. Okay. Um, you pretending to be Diggle. Uh, oh, man. That got a mat chill. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, everybody. So let's talk about let's talk about some Archer's Alley. That's right, guys. I've got awesome info for you for Archer's Alley today. So we're going to bring up the first picture. It's actually a double hitter for you all. It is Liam Neeson. Of a fun fact about him. So many of you know Liam Neeson played Ra's al Ghul in Batman Begins. And he offered in an interview to play Ra's al Ghul for Arrow. Shut our up. Our Arrow. That makes me so angry. Hello? Why did Hello? they do that? <sighs> that makes me want to just throw something. Well, you know what? Ra's is dead. So I would like to say, that can been... he come Amazing. back as Liam Neeson? Hello, like this he's always man. saving somebody. They need to steal somebody's daughter, and then Liam Nielsen comes back I'm and he's sorry. like, "It's my daughter. This is my daughter." Yeah. So yeah, I don't. Maybe maybe like you know, homegirl who thinks she's a queen isn't, and she's gonna find out she's actually Ra's al Ghul's other daughter. I mean, I'd be down for it. If Liam Nielsen walked into Era on the CW, <laughs> and said, "I'm Ra's al Ghul," I he would said actually in an interview, I would crap he wanted my pants. to do it when I. I came... mean, like diaper full, just boosh. <laughs> When I came across that tidbit, I was like, that's it. It's going in in Archer's Alley. I can't believe they haven't used that. I'm putting it out there. Inter Twitter, do your thing. I mean, the guy like, who... Can somebody just cut this as a clip? I'm going to be like, Liam Neeson wanted to be an arrow. Twitter, do your thing. Cut I mean, the, it, the, the guy was there. good. The actor was good, but still. It's Liam Neeson. It's Liam Neeson. He was okay. good. Liam okay. Neeson is like, Liam Neeson. Zim. All right, what's our next Archer's Alley? Um, all right, so our next Archer's Alley is a fun fact from the comics, which we're about to bring up. And... It has to do with Sinestro. I love Sinestro. 
Yes. Sad we never got a green light. What do you guys think it is? Are they predicting what it is in the chat? Mm, No. There's talk about Rawls Head Ghoul and Liam Neeson. Cool. So in. Green Lantern Rebirth, Sinestro states that he hates the Green Arrow because he wears the color of willpower. Yeah. Which I've brought up how strong his willpower is in the past because he is one of the only people, in fact, he's the only human, really, that can stand against the Black Lantern Corps' uh, mind control. Mm. He cannot be compelled by the Black Lantern Corps. So it's interesting that uh, Sinestro even sees how powerful his willpower is. Fun fact. Fun fact. He might not be super powered, but he is stubborn He's with a capital stubborn. S. Stubborn with a capital S. And then to round out our news and gossip, it's not really gossip, but it's really After cool, lunch. fun fact for you guys. I have a fun fact for you guys. I've actually interviewed Kat McNamara before, and I brought you a video clip. Oh, that's a photo of us at Vanity Fair. It was a really fun party. Haley Seinfeld was DJing. Um, it was two years ago. And this is when uh, Shadowhunters was just coming out. And I have a video clip for you guys to watch of us chatting. What has been your favorite scene that's aired so far to film? Oh, um, one of my favorite scenes to film was um, outside of Jade Wolf in among the, it was at the end of episode five, basically all the shipping containers and everything, just because it took us so many nights to shoot that. We had weather issues and it was just, it was a, a few nights of all-nighters and we were just absolutely delirious and cowering from tennis ball werewolves. So it was, it was quite the memorable thing. Like, save Simon! Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So as you see, she is no stranger to working with CGI. So let's see what happens on Arrow and where her character goes. I'm really excited. If you want to see more of Kat's acting, you can check her out on Shadowhunters. Um, it's a bit of a younger show, FYI. So don't expect like Arrow level plot lines. They've made it much younger. Hot guy from Glee's in that. Henry, Harry Shum. He's so cute. Oh, I think Dominic Sherwood is so sexy. Okay. He plays like the lead guy. He has two different color eyes and a British accent. I'm, oh, no. I'm in. Yeah, I'm there swoon. for that too. Uh, oh yeah, you'd be we'd I'm be screaming together. But so, anyways, that was my fun fact. I hope you guys liked it. If you want to see more, it's out there. I've got a longer, much longer interview with Kat. Um, she's really cool. I actually also met her at the Nylon Young Nylon Young Hollywood party. Man, that was like a tongue twister. It was. Uh, so I'll try and find it and bring it in for you guys. Yeah, tweet it out, follow you. And, yeah. the, and now I also want to say, we're going to talk about predictions real quick. I just want to say, shout out for Elseworld. You know, what I love about this teaser that we saw, for someone who's been a fan, who watched the original Flash in the 90s, who then they have the Green Arrow costume from Smallville in this te- Like, Greg Berlanti, their team, it's so rewarding for these longtime fans. I'm my prediction right now as we go into predictions, I think this is gonna be the best, most epic crossover ever. And I think it's gonna tie in not only what's been happening now, but some really cool lore for some like some people my age that are like a little bit older that have been watching this stuff like back in the day. That's my Your prediction. After Buzz TV yeah. predictions. Sorry, I said it wasn't predictions and then it was. Thank you. Um well, this isn't a prediction because they've actually tweeted out that I think Stephen Amell tweeted out himself that we are going to be in for one heck of a surprise with the Smallville reunion. There's going to be some Smallville action on this year's crossover, and I agree. I think it's going to be the most epic crossover, and I really hope that it finally brings Supergirl into our present time and place, and she's no longer on a different world. I would world, love that. But they're all part of the same world, just different parts it of it. I hope yeah. that that's what it, it rounds up, because we've been missing her living on this actual I Earth. Agree with that. Because we have to say, uh, I love Arrow, y'all, but we have to, Supergirl is so great it's right so now. Good. It's kind of one of the best shows. It's, it's like really amazingly good. good. So if you're not watching Supergirl, catch up. All right. So, hey, so that's it. We talked about everything that we need to talk about, but we can always talk about more. You can always leave your comments in the YouTube channel, and we, you know. You know that we'll go, Olivia's on it. You know, she is like obsessive about it. So she'll be there. You can also tweet us, Instagram us, keep the conversation going. And then crossover starts next week. So we're going to be still doing our same Starts night, on Sunday, you on guys. Sunday. So yeah. we're going to be doing the second episode of crossover. So that said, if you haven't seen the first episode of crossover, don't watch our episode because we're probably going to be talking about spoilers from yeah. the episode before. So anyway, okay. 
just shout out your name, your Twitch, tell everybody where they can find you as Carolina. All right, you guys. So you guys can find me on Twitter as Carolina Benetti and on Instagram as Lena Bean 113 But before I go, I want to let you know that I, myself, am on the midwinter finale of SEAL Team on CBS. You can catch it next Wednesday. I'll remind you again next week because I'm excited. Yes. Book the midseason finale. Check it out. I may or may not be doing something involuntarily. That's great. I don't know. I feel uncomfortable now. I'm scared. My character. Uh, oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. But, but we're good for you. We're excited when people book stuff. And y'all know me, Matt Marr, two T's, two R's. You can find me at the Matt Marr. Uh, you can also find our Riverdale podcast called River Males, uh, which is not good right now, but we are having fun shading that show. And also, Bitchcraft is coming back because in two weeks, Sabrina's going to have a Christmas episode. We're going to be talking about Did that, Did you too. see the season two trailer? Looks yeah, good. Yeah, it looks good. We're going to be talking about that in April. And we're actually going to break down the, break down the comics for Bitchcraft. Craft as well. So if you're into Sabrina, check that out. We're going to be here next Monday. We're excited for Aeros Worlds. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to After Buzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.